What's up guys? I'm Olivia. And I'm Kyle. And we're driving and vibing. Today we are super excited to be counting down our top 10 free campsites of this year, so stay tuned. Welcome back to our channel everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're excited to get into this list of free campsites. It was so hard to decide, but thanks for tuning in. If it's your first time here, we would love for you to subscribe and join the Vibe Tribe. So if you are unfamiliar with our travels, we've been doing it full time for two years in a 16 foot vintage camper. In 2017, we have camped at over 60 locations. And today we're gonna share the top 10 free ones with you. Yeah, so we'll go ahead and jump right in because we've got 10 and we've got lots of details we want to share with you about some pros and cons about each of them. So number 10 on our list is the main drag 525 in Sedona, Arizona. So 525 is the forest road that it's located on. So it is forest camping with a 14 day stay limit. And if you need water in to dump, it is available in Flagstaff, which is about, I think 35 to 40 miles north of there. Yeah, one of the biggest perks about this campsite to us is the proximity to so many great hiking trails. We hiked the Devil's Bridge and a few other ones in the area. And I mean, it's just stunning views all the way around. So that was a huge plus for us. Plus it is right near near Cottonwood and Jerome. So there's some other things to explore in those towns and some shopping you can do there. Now the main drag 525 can fit all size rigs, but beware that it is a um, washboarded road. So it is a little rough and the biggest rigs really only fit well in the first few sites that are available on the left hand side of the road. As far as cell service goes, it was a pretty slow AT&T and T-Mobile, but it was enough for us to do some light surfing on the web, but no heavy usage like streaming or things like that. And a few things to consider about this site is like I said the washboard road and uh, the big rigs are pretty much uh, limited to the front spots but the site can also be pretty crowded because Sedona is a pretty popular area. Yeah when we were there most of the sites had rigs and then we shared our spot with two other rigs. It was still spaced out enough that we had our own area but you're definitely looking at um, probably sharing a space with some other people unless you get lucky and score one of the single sites. So next up on our list is number nine, and that is Gray Rocks Reservoir in Wheatland, Wyoming. And this site holds a special place in our heart because it's where we viewed the total solar eclipse. Yes, it was a huge area. It's uh, managed by the Department of Fish and Wildlife, and there's a 14 day stay limit there. It was just wide open. There's tons of sites right on the water there, and we just kept driving down the road and there was more and more spots. So even yeah. though it was really busy for the solar eclipse, we could have still fit hundreds more rigs in there. I can only imagine any other time of the year where it's not such a special event that there will be so much privacy available so much space to spread out there are seven different entry points into the area so I would say just scout it out before pulling a big rig down there or driving a class A there we definitely saw those there but some of the entryways are a little rougher than others so just scout it out beforehand and if you need to refill your water or dump there is a free station at the Lewis City Park in Wheatland which is just eight miles away the cell service we got at Gray Rocks was 3G AT&T with our WeBoost booster. We could stream Netflix there, but once it got really busy, the network got bogged down. But I can't imagine it would be bogged down on any regular situation. Yeah, it seems like it should be fine as long as it's not too crowded. And some things to consider about this spot is it's kind of out in the middle of nowhere. So there's no big towns or great shopping nearby. So it's gonna be a little bit of a drive if you wanna go grocery shopping or stock up before you get there. So coming in at number eight on our list is Saboya Mesa Campground in Cuesta, New Mexico. So this is in the Carson National Forest. There is a 14 day stay limit there and it's overlooking the Rio Grande Gorge, which is just a breathtaking view for a free spot. One of the most stunning free spots we stayed at all year as far as just the scenery is concerned. It's ideal for rigs that are about 20 feet and under. I would not recommend a big rig going back there. An adventurous one could potentially fit there, but the road is, uh, you know, washboarded. There are overhanging limbs. So I would just proceed with caution if you're in a big rig. 
Yeah, so it's a really nice location though because it's right by Taos and it's located inside the Enchanted Circle in northern New Mexico, which is just a great area so you could go out and explore and there's lots of things to do in the area. And right from the campsite, there is a hiking trail that goes down to the Rio Grande River and we went on it, it was exhausting. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it if you're out of uh, the habit of going on hikes because it kicked our butt. Yeah, the, the elevation gain was very intense it was a steep hike to the bottom and back up and on site there is a vault toilet which is a plus the cell service we got there was one of the other amazing things it was 4g t-mobile at&t we easily could stream anything we wanted to and uploaded our youtube videos very quickly there definitely and so some things to consider about this site like we mentioned were the rough and narrow roads possibly some low-hanging branches it's definitely more ideal for smaller rigs and there's no trash receptacle on site so you need to pack it in and pack it out. So coming in at number seven is Craggy Wash in Lake Havasu, Arizona. This is one of the more recent free campsites we visited and we really loved it because it's proximity to such a fun town to visit. Yeah, this is located on BLM land there with a 14 day stay limit. You do need to check in with the camp host for this site though. And all size rigs can fit. We saw a class A there, but if you are in an extra large rig or just have a rig that might have some clearance issues, I would go scout it out first just to be sure you can find a spot. There are dump stations at a few of the different gas stations nearby as well. And there is is a lot of space out at this site so you shouldn't have any trouble finding a spot but it is one of the more crowded spots so you're not going to have as much privacy there but it could be a good thing if you're into socializing we met some really cool people while we were there so that was definitely a plus for us and beautiful desert sunsets as far as the cell service is concerned we got amazing AT&T and T-Mobile there and I don't even think we needed the booster we might have been using it but the speeds were good enough for streaming yeah and some things to consider about this site are it might be a little busy and you're gonna lack some of the privacy here and it was a little difficult for us to find a water fill up station so we are not sure where the best place to fill up is there so number six on our list is Indian bread rocks in Bowie Arizona This is a BLM site with a 14 day stay limit and it is really cool because it has such unique scenery right around there. Yes, some of the coolest rock formations you can climb all up in there and get an amazing view of the campground below, but you do need to be careful going in there. Rigs 25 foot and up may have a little difficulty getting in there. There's like a cattle guard getting in which is kind of narrow and there's some sharper turns. We have had friends in schoolies and in 30 plus foot airstreams get there and camp just fine but again you might want to scout it out beforehand there is a vault toilet there there are trash cans and picnic tables it's a very well developed site to be free yeah but there is no shopping really nearby so you should probably stock up before you get there the cell is fast 4g AT&T our friends had fast Verizon there so but we got no T-Mobile at the Indian bread rocks yeah some other things to consider are like we said the turning radius for the rigs just scout that out come prepared and when we were there it was a little rainy so it got a little muddy nothing washed out but it was kind of messy coming in at number five is one of the most beautiful waterfront sites we camped at all year and that is Lake Hattie near Laramie Wyoming So this is managed by the Department of Fish and Wildlife. There is a five day stay limit here and it can accommodate any size rig. We got a sweet spot down right by the water. It was a little sandy down there, but we felt comfortable parking. The bigger rigs might not get those waterfront uh, sites. So just drive around and see what's available and really see what you're comfortable with because the sand is packed hard, but in some areas it is much softer. It is a really beautiful site, but you might not have awesome privacy there because it does seem to be a popular spot for the locals in the area they come and camp and fish and things like that which we enjoyed watching and seeing the families come through but if you want your privacy it might not be the best spot and it is 20 miles from downtown Laramie which is a little too long to be driving back and forth every day but we did enjoy Laramie as far as everything that it offered a fun college town vibe health food stores and any type of shopping we were looking for 
As far as on-site amenities, there is a boat launch, there's bathrooms available, and if you need to dump your tanks and refill water, you can do that in Laramie at the Prison Museum. And they only ask for a donation for dumping and filling up water, so that's pretty awesome as well. As far as our cell service goes, we had fast AT&T 4G connectivity there. Uh, we just love to be able to be out in nature this far and be able to have amazing internet connection. Yeah, we love the best of both worlds, being out in a remote area but still being so connected to. Um, some other things to consider about this site are just scouting out the beach before driving down there just to make sure the sand is packed well and that you can navigate down there easily and the, the drive to Laramie is a little bit long to go out there every day. One of the other things we notice is that sometimes it can get pretty windy there so it wasn't anything that was too annoying but if you have like an outdoor mat or something just make sure it's well secured. Number four on our list is Jackson Mountain Road in Pagosa Springs, Colorado. And this site is an amazing mountain forest type of camping environment. It is in the National Forest, which is a 14 day stay limit. And the first site that we found there can fit all size rigs, but there aren't many more sites beyond that. And definitely they can accommodate bigger rigs. Yeah, so it might be a little difficult to find a spot here since there are so few and score the front spot, which seems to be one of the most popular ones. So if you have a larger rig and are maybe towing a vehicle, you might want to scout it out beforehand. Now, Pagosa was a super fun town. It is known for its hot springs. So while we were there, we went and soaked in the hot springs and we just walked around the waterfront. They have a beautiful waterfront trail there. Yeah, and they have hiking nearby. There's lots of cool little activities to do in the town. And I like the spot that we found because it was very private. It's big enough for any size rig, but it's small enough to not be inviting for more people to camp in the same spot. Yeah, and it was just a very relaxing spot in the mountains. It was fall, so all the leaves were like this vibrant orange, and I just felt so like at peace there. We did get amazing AT&T and T-Mobile while camping at Jackson Mountain Road in Pagosa Springs, so that was great. But there are a few things to consider, and one of them is that you might not find a spot there. And just like we said earlier, maybe if you have a larger rig or have a toad, scout it out first just to make sure you can get turned around if you get up there. And check the weather because it is at high elevation in the mountains, so night times can easily get in the freezing or below. Next up on our list is number three, and that is North Creek in Virgin, Utah. This is BLM land and it is right outside of Zion National Park. There is a 14 day stay limit there and we just love the proximity to the national park so we could go explore but not spend a fortune staying at an RV park and it's so hard to get into the campgrounds inside the national park. And unlike some of the other free camping spots that we researched in the area, this one had a lot of shade and it was right by a creek. And those were kind of the two selling points for us to why to explore this one just because it creates a better vibe for us. But big rigs might have a hard time finding a spot. We saw about enough space for one or two big rigs there. Yeah, the spots for big rigs are probably gonna be right at the entrance there. Once you get further down, it can be really difficult to get turned around. So I would scout it out beforehand and make sure you have a spot open because if you get back there, you're gonna struggle a little bit. We even struggled in our 16 foot rig. So definitely proceed with caution. But the National Park location, was our favorite thing. We went on hikes in Zion while we were there. We even went out to St. George and explored some of the other local areas. And it was a very busy spot. There weren't many available spots left open, but it was gorgeous. It was one of my favorite places to just sit outside in the shade, play with the dog. It had a very comfortable environment. We got great cell signal with AT&T and T-Mobile. It was 4G LTE, so we had no problem streaming or uploading there. But there are a few things to consider with this site. And that would be that there may not be any sites available and that it's better suited for smaller size rigs. Number two on our list is Magnolia Beach County Park in Port Lavaca, Texas.
This was the best waterfront camping experience we've had yet because it is right on the water, but it is calm water. So you don't get the waves or the salty wind coming on you. So we just enjoyed the overall peace and serenity of this site. This site is located on a bay, so it is much calmer. The tides don't fluctuate that much and you can get right up front on the water. Yeah, that's why we really like this site more than the site on Padre Island because the tides fluctuated so much and we always had to be on guard. So it was so much more calm. There there is no posted stay limit at this park, so we really don't know what to tell you. We camped there for about five days, and it seemed like other people have camped there for up to two weeks. There are free hot showers there, which is amazing though. Yeah, that is almost unheard of, is a free site with nice hot showers. They also had trash receptacles all available along the site, and it was a beautiful view, great proximity to town. We just really fell in love with this site. So we also got 4G, AT&T, and T-Mobile here at Magnolia Beach and it was fast enough that we could stream whatever we wanted to. But there are a few things to consider and that is one of them, it might be busy and there isn't much privacy. It really is kind of like a parking lot there. Yeah, it's just a wide open area so there's nothing really breaking up the privacy in between you. Everyone's just kind of lined up on the beach. But I did like that this beach was not so sandy. It was more like crushed shells which was very packed and hard and it didn't cling to everything like regular sand does. And class A's could drive on it just fine. We saw so many of them while we were there. So number one on our list, it is by far our favorite campsite all year, is Wedge Overlook in Emory, Utah and it is located on the Little Grand Canyon. Yeah, we almost overlooked this spot on our way to Moab and I'm so happy we didn't because it was just gorgeous. It is located on BLM land and they have a 14 day stay limit there and it's probably better suited for rigs that are 27 feet or under. They have established campsites all throughout the developed park area and the site we were on, it was the most epic site we've ever camped at, just a few feet away from the canyon's edge, which was amazing. Yeah, the ones that are right near the canyon edge are going to be a little bit more difficult for the bigger rigs though, but the proximity to this view is great for any of the sites. It's just a short drive down there. There's great hiking here and also BMX biking trails, lots of activities to do. And the reason why we almost overlooked this site was because it is down a 20 mile dirt road. It was a really well maintained dirt road though. They kept it oiled so it was very well packed. It wasn't really bumpy and graded or anything like that. It was a very smooth ride. But I'm glad we ventured further down there. We almost didn't go because we were like, man, that's a long dirt road that we don't want to get stuck down. Yeah, but in the dirt road, like Olivia said, the quality of it was better than many paved roads we've been on. So please don't let that intimidate you if your rig can fit because it is so so worth it. Wedge Overlook does have a vault toilet and if you need water we did see a water spigot in front of the Huntington post office in one of the closest towns. There is no trash receptacles there though so you will need to pack all your trash out. The cell service in this area was great. We had 4G LTE with AT&T and T-Mobile so we were streaming and very well connected. It's another one of those sites that it boggles our mind that the cell service is so good there because there is nothing around within a 20 mile radius easily but it was the best of both worlds with the connectivity and the complete privacy and quiet at nighttime. Yeah. But there are a few things to consider. And that would be just that big rigs might not fit in all the premium spots and it's a long drive into town. <laughs> yes. If at any time this list was a little too much data for you at once, please check the article below in the description and in the comments section. That'll give you all the GPS coordinates and just more information about these sites. So hopefully this video was helpful for you guys. It's always so hard for us to pick just 10 of our favorite campsites. And if you want to check out the top 10 free campsites from our first year on the road, just click this link above and that'll give you 10 more amazing free spots. Thank you guys so much for joining us and we'll see you next time. Later on.